Hey, welcome to an episode of Cutter One. I am your host, Jay Just Jay, your resident troublemaker and your resident culture warrior. I hope you're all doing well. Um, this is the the other video that I'm having to re-upload again. I want to give a shout out to WD and Kevin Galt, who reached out to me and were like, dude, your videos, they got the music, but we're not hearing a word you're saying. I'm not sure if either maybe my microphone, something got disconnected or maybe it's, the file got corrupted. But either way, redoing it. So let's get right back into it. But uh, before that, I just want to say thank you to you guys for pointing it out to me. All right, let's hit this up. Okay. Was the rings of power that bad? Because the numbers paint a different picture. At first, it looked like no one liked the Lord of the Rings, the rings of power. But recent numbers have shown that that's not true. Oh boy, this ought to be interesting. Okay, so for many fans, there was legitimate hype going into the Lord of Rings, the Rings of Power. Yes, I would agree with that. I was one of those people who was hyped for it and, you know, was keeping my fingers crossed that Amazon wouldn't screw it up. Oh, how I was, you know, disappointed. Anyway, um, as the first of the Lord of the Rings content to come out since Peter Jackson's trilogies, they were excited to see what the Amazon series would offer. After all, as the most expensive television show of all time, it was bound to be good. However, that wasn't everyone's attitude. A portion of the fan base approached the Rings of Power with nothing but skepticism. And rightly so. Rightly so. Listen, if, if Doctor Who and Star Trek and Star Wars um, and Marvel have shown us anything over the past, I don't know, 10, 15 years. It's that the minute these billion-dollar corporations get their hands on your beloved franchise, it's going to be a rough ride, okay? Prepare for the rough ride, okay? We're talking back alley, no love, not taking you out to dinner first, rough ride, okay? Okay. And we know that. So it's healthy to find out that Amazon, a billion dollar corporation, is going to be making a series based on, on Tolkien's work. As Tolkien fans, yeah, we have every right to be skeptical. But let's keep going. Most of the skeptical fans were upset that the series was reportedly playing fast and loose with some of Tolkien's lore. Duh. Like, yeah, exactly. Yes, that was our fear. And it was, it was a well-founded fear. While those fans' complaints were justified on some fronts, no, on fucking all fronts, their initial skepticism hindered their ability to enjoy the Rings of Power at all. No, it wasn't my skepticism that hindered my ability to enjoy the Rings of Power. It was your shit writing. It was your, your bad acting. It was your lore breaking left and right. It was just your crappy show overall that prevented me from enjoying it, not my skepticism. That's why some reviews for The Rings of Power weren't very good. Yeah, no shit, because your show wasn't very good. The thing is, recent numbers have shown that a lot of the negative press was put out by a small vocal group of narrow-minded fans. There we go. Again, and this is going to be a recurring theme that you'll, you'll hear a lot over the next two years until we get the next season, is this laying the groundwork that, okay, your skepticism, you being skeptical of what Amazon plans to do with Tolkien's work, okay, is a problem. It is the reason why you couldn't enjoy it, okay, because you're narrow-minded, because you've seen Disney screw up franchises. You've seen other franchises that you may have grown up loving be pillaged and, 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 and destroyed by these mega corporations, but your narrow mindedness made you skeptical that another billion dollar corporation would do the same thing to Tolkien. And that's why you couldn't enjoy anything. Okay. Uh, why some Lord of the Rings fans didn't like the Rings of Power. The Rings of Power had 25 million global viewers on the on the day of its debut, Amazon's largest premiere. Yes, that is true. You dropped two episodes at 25 million global viewers. Roughly 12 million and change per episode. However, it was clear that a lot of fans weren't happy because the Rotten Tomatoes audience score was only 37%. That is true. Amazon put a three-day pause on its user reviews because executives feared that initial review bombing... Because executives... Feared that, feared initial review bombing. Since then, the audience score has only risen to 39%, which typically signals that the low reviews weren't actually review bombing. Rather, a number of people really didn't and still don't like the series. And let's not forget, okay, they did far more than just put a three day pause on reviews. They put a three day pause on reviews 
Okay. Then they filtered reviews. So if they didn't like your review and what you had to say about the show, they just wouldn't allow it to go through. Okay. There's plenty of evidence of people posting about the, the little emails they would get saying, we're sorry, your review doesn't meet our standards. We're not including it. Okay. So they filtered reviews. Then they flat out deleted some reviews. Jeremy over at the quartering had a video where one day he showed the numbers of positive and negative reviews. And then the very next day, you saw that the negative reviews, only just the negative reviews, miraculously, like almost 3,000 negative reviews had magically disappeared. They just vanished into the ether. And then once the story broke and a lot of people started talking about it, those reviews magically came back. Hmm, that's a lot more than just putting a three-day pause on reviews. It's them trying to manipulate your perception of whether or not the show is good. Okay, that's what they tried to do. They actively tried to manipulate you, the viewer, into thinking this was a good show. Okay, um, anyway, let's continue. The reason that some fans didn't like the series was due to the lore based decisions. Exactly. That is 90% of why people didn't like it. It's because you fucked with the lore and you never fuck with the lore. Lord of the Rings fans take Tolkien's material very seriously. That is true. So when the Rings of Power started making some changes to canon, like the new origin of Mithril, it didn't vibe with some fans. No, not that it didn't vibe, it fucking pissed us off. Okay? That is the reality. It pissed us off. For instance, a Rotten Tomato audience review said, quote, maybe if the show was not an adaptation of Lord of the Rings and was something else, maybe the Rings of Power would have stood a chance in my eyes. But to be connected to J.R.R. Tolkien's work was a joke, Paul in the Six. And he's absolutely right. He is absolutely right. Paul, you are correct. That and similar responses made it seem like no one liked the Rings of Power. However, that's not true at all. The numbers prove that fans did like the Rings of Power. And look, we have this interesting little chart coming from IMDb. Hmm, what could possibly be wrong with that? I guess they're right. Oh, wait, IMDb is owned by Amazon.com. Imagine that. Imagine my shock. This is my shock face at finding that out. Anyway, on the flip side of the criticism, many, many fans really did like The Rings of Power. Another Rotten Tomato audience review said, I don't get why this show gets so much hate. I can agree the first episode isn't the best, putting it mildly, but you can't judge a show based on one of the episodes. Mm, yeah, you can. <laughs> the action is on point. <laughs> wrong the visuals are absolutely stunning i'll give you that the visuals are good the way they reveal who sauron was and who the stranger was is great um i'm gonna have to disagree with you there the characters are good i'm seriously gonna have to disagree with you there the acting is good okay now we ha we're, we're stepping outside we're gonna have words okay i don't see why people say act the acting is bad Amazing show. Durfla? Durfla? I don't know. Basically, the series reviews matched the pre-release sentiments. Those who wanted to like the Rings of Power liked it. But those who were skeptical didn't like it because they never gave it a chance. Again, going back to what I said, okay? It's your fault you didn't like it. It's the, the show was awesome balls and amazing. You're the one with your narrow mind. It's interesting to note, however, that there are a lot more fans who like the series than disliked it. Okay, it means nothing. Okay, um, a lot more people like chocolate over vanilla. So, that, that's a non-argument. During the series run, Parrot Analytics found that the audience demand was 34.5 times the demand of the average TV series in the United States. Okay. Likewise, Nielsen ratings show an impressive 988 million minutes of viewing time in the U.S. during the week of September 12th to 18th, the most recent numbers as of this writing. Okay, now let's take this Parrot Analytics thing found that the audience demand was 34.5 times the demand of the average TV series in the United States. Um, well, that is only a relevant number if you have some point of comparison. Well, what are, if you're talking about the average TV series, are we talking about the average TV series that's on right now? 
Are we talking the average TV series from 10 years ago? Are we talking an aggregate average? Okay. It's sort of like a misleading. You can just say, oh, it's 34.5 times greater than the average TV series as far as demand, but you have no point of reference for that statement. You're not showing us any point of reference for that statement. Okay. Um, I could show what... How do we know that the House of the Dragon didn't have a 40.1% times demand than the average series? So you're leaving out a lot of information, which makes that statistic kind of irrelevant. All of this information together makes it clear that there were a few vocal viewers who really didn't like this series. I would argue with the phrasing few. Uh, while a majority of viewers thought it was pretty good. Again... Uh, that means nothing um, in terms of uh, you say a majority of viewers, but you have no no way of proving that you're just sort of assuming you're making some assumptions. Another bit of proof for that is the above chart from IMDB reflecting user ratings for the series. Most of the reviews were either one or 10 stars with very little ratings in the middle. Again, that chart combined with negative comments seems to show that a lot of viewers gave the rings of power negative reviews based on its non adherence to Tolkien material, not on its own merit and see that's the argument they keep coming back to they keep coming back to well you didn't like this because it didn't adhere to tolkien okay and and you can't do that that's not a valid you know, a valid way to judge the show the show should be judged on its own merit except that the show is the lord of the rings the rings of power based on tolkien's work so what you're saying is your show, which is based on Tolkien's work, should not be held to the standard of Tolkien's work. <clears throat> Hopefully viewers will be a little more open-minded in season two. No, I'm actually going to be a hell of a lot more skeptical because I've seen how bad of a fucking train wreck season one was. Um, the Rings of Power season one is streaming, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's the article I wanted to touch on because it's more cope um, coming out of mainstream media and, uh, you know, it's it's just BS. I know I sort of went off on a tangent and a couple of times I sort of started a thought process and, and bounced away from it. But just reading this, even reading this again to redo this video pisses me off. And that article, by the way, is by Blake Hawkins. Um, and that's coming from CBR.com. Um, no, no matter what metric you use, the show was was BS. And another thing is, where's where's Amazon's numbers? Where's Amazon's numbers? They have not released the actual numbers for how many, you know, for viewership as a whole, for the whole series, okay? They've released the numbers they wanted to, but there's no big picture that they haven't released the big picture numbers. Um, so we still don't have a point of reference. And it's been how many weeks since the season finale? Um, the fact that they're not out there, you know, screaming from the rooftops with their numbers to say, this is how great our show is and this is how much it was loved let you know all that you need to know. Um, I'll probably wind up doing a video on that as well. But anyway, I just wanted to touch base. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it's us and our unrealistic expectations that we would expect your Tolkien-based show to live up to Tolkien standards and our narrow-mindedness because we're skeptical of billion-dollar corporations getting their hands on our beloved fan fandom and, and, and prison graping it? Um... Yeah, you know, let me know what you think, all right, down in the comments below. Remember, if you like the video, give it a like, give it a share. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments and your feedback. Most importantly, let's uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you're a returning subscriber, that's awesome. If not, please hit the subscribe button. We're trying to build this up and get some momentum going and getting this thing off the ground, and I would really appreciate that. So until the next time, um, I will see you when I drop the next video. Peace.